Well, here we have a Buck 120 with the Coca-Bola in brass. Uh, it's not real Coca-Bola. Um, it's Diamond Wood, or there's several other names that they go by. Uh, this knife here is a, 90, uh, a 1990, so um, it has the 425M steel, M standing for modification. Um, beautiful knife, uh, very, very beautiful knife, and this was before the uh, Edge 2000, which um, after the year 2000, um, Buck uh, began grinding their knives differently. Uh, 15 degrees per side for, you know, 30 inclusive. So their uh, their newer knives were, um, you know, sharpened at, at that angle. They're the final grind, if you will, um, for a more expedient sharpening and a better slicing knife, which I guess I can't complain with, uh, you know, what they did there. Um, here is my 119. Um this, I want to say, is either a 2013 or 14. I'd have to check it out. Um, same thing, except this is the 420 HC steel. One thing that I did notice, and I have noticed with other older buck knives, is that I believe that they, the, the uh, buck knives used to be made of thicker stock, this being the uh, 120 on this side. And uh, I, I have compared this uh, with my 119 to a uh, 1991 buck as well. Uh, and the 91 buck uh, appeared to be older. So some of you uh, buck fanatics out there, I know that there's a lot of you. Maybe you can uh, answer that question there. Uh, did buck knives used to use thicker stock steel? Okay, so uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about was um, was the sheath that came with this uh, with this knife. I uh, happen to like the sheath a lot, uh, actually more so than the uh, current buck sheaths. It's got a nice swivel here. The one thing that's different about the uh, current buck knife sheaths is uh, how high the knife rides on the belt, and. Uh, I like knives that, that are about this length here, I, excuse me, the sheath, where we have the uh, belt loop come to the top of the knife. I feel then at this point, if you sit or however you move, this doesn't jab, uh, jab you in the, in the ribs. The newer models seem to, uh, uh, while it's made with good quality leather, it seems to, uh, you know, ride a little bit too high for me, especially when you're getting into six inch blades and higher uh, to resheed them with a uh, longer shirt on or even a coat or jacket. Um, you got to pick the knife up higher on your body to drop it down in the sheath because of how high it, it, uh, it rides. So this, this knife here, um, here is the original paperwork um, with, with the knife. This knife was actually purchased in California. Um, I was not the original purchaser of this knife. Here is the, uh, you can see, $74.95. But uh, very, very nice knife. So different uh, sheath options for this knife that I have uh, come across. And it combines a lot of aspects that I do like is the uh, sheath for the uh, Sog Bowie, Super Bowie, to be exact. And uh, here we have a Super Bowie for a little bit of size comparison here. The Buck 120 handling much, much nicer than the uh, Super Bowie. Great sheath that uh, came with the uh, SOG knife. I, I really like how the retention strap is on the spine side of the knife. So uh, when, when drawing the knife, we don't cut or have, you know, it doesn't, it, it, it will never happen unless you put the knife in backwards. You're never going to cut the strap. So that's always nice. Love the fact of, of the uh, 
pouch for a stone. I wish more makers would do this. I really like to have the ability to touch the knife up uh, in the field and not have to go into a, a pocket on the pack or a different pouch or this or that. It's all right on the knife. Um, I know that the uh, vintage like Schrade knives, the old timer 165, I think some of those had come with uh, the stone pouch on the sheath. And um, of course, Randall knives does it. It's just a nice little addition to uh, have on there. This way, the knife is, is a complete kit in a sense. Uh, then obviously, the other thing that I like about it is, uh, you know, the... The uh, end of the pommel here comes to about the top of the sheath, and it holds this knife in quite well. And uh, you cannot bypass that retentioning strap by trying to, you know, move the knife out of the way. And it is in there for good. So also, uh, seeing that I have the Buck 119 here as well, a sheath that fits the Buck 119 is the Sog Bowie 2.0 sheath. Look at that. Rides just a little bit higher, but still not bad. It's still quite acceptable. And sharpening uh, pouch here for the stone. Another great thing, like I had said. So, uh, you know, I guess I, the other question I, I could uh, have as well is I am no longer able to find the sheaths for the SOG Bowies on the market. Regular stock sheath from SOG. Uh, you know, nothing uh, handmade or custom made. I'm just talking the straight up sheaths, just like I showed you. Uh, I had looked briefly. I remember seeing them in the past. They could be purchased separately as a repl uh, replacement sheath, but I'm not finding them anymore. If anybody has any information with regards to that, that'd be nice to see in the comment section as well. One of the great things about um, Buck Knives um is is their uh, great great ability to uh, uh, slice? They they are really good slicing knives. These knives are advertised as you know hunters, hunting knives, big heavy hunting knives, uh, and you know they are they 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 truly are. Um, the buck twenty being for you know obviously much larger game um, than whitetail. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking uh, elk, moose, bear, those things like that. Um, it handles very, very nice. The uh, 119, obviously, you know, is still quite big for whitetail, but a lot of people like it. A lot of people um, have used it for that. Um, you know, you can do out panfish with either of these knives if you're careful. So a lot of it is is the user. Um, but obviously certain knives in their shapes, designs, sizes, you know, um, you know, can make jobs easier. Um, just because it can be done doesn't mean it should be done, you know. So there probably are better knives, obviously, for it. A lot of this is just having the classic, you know, uh, American feel, at least for me. I really, really enjoy that. Uh, and, you know... Um, just just the whole uh, having a, a great camp knife um, in the system. Uh, in terms of batoning and those things, I, I know that it's it's important to a lot of people that, that the knife um, performs that. Uh, I don't really, um, you know, do that too much. There's uh, lots of ways around it. Furthermore, the, the uh, you know, uh, wedges can be made and those different things. Um, Buck has gotten this rap of, of having, you know, uh, not good for batoning or this or that. Well, I'll tell you, man, I mean, I, I have thumped on this 119. Um, I have friends who have thumped on their 119s. I mean, thumped on them. And uh, nothing happened to those knives. The handles never loosened up. It, nothing like that. They are very, very strong knives. If you aren't uh, breaking a Mora knife, something like that, a Mora classic, which is, you know, the uh, epitome of a, of a bushcraft knife, uh, you're, you're not going to break a buck knife. I also hear people say, oh, you know, the uh, the tips, the tips of the of the buck 119 and then the buck 120, they're, you know, very, very delicate. Well, um, they, they are, uh, 
I wouldn't say you'd have to baby them, but I like a delicate tip. That's good. I can, you know, make holes, uh, you know, punch holes in, in leather for straps, um, you know, on packs or on a belt or, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, it's good for getting into tight places, whether it be on game or even uh, woodworking, notches, anything like that. Uh, starting the, the cut on small game even, different things like that. Uh, a good sharp tip is, is very advantageous out there in the, in the field. Um, if you're batoning something that's that big, that only gives you, you know, the, the last couple inches on the knife to strike with your baton, uh, the knife's not the problem. I'll tell you that right now. But uh, <laughs> there's other videos that uh, talk about, you know, batoning and, and those things. Um, seating the knife and, uh, you know, taking it out, putting a wedge in that slot and pounding the wedge home really is the way to go, even if you have a knife that, you know, can hold up to it. I find that a lot of, uh, you know, modern uh, American knives and stuff um, have gone the way of making these extremely sharp pry bars. And while they're great for, you know, splitting wood, they, they really lack a lot of, um, you know, other things that a knife should do. A knife should cut and slice first and foremost. Um, that is a knife's duty. Um, and, you know, because of that, uh, we, we have a lot of newer knives on the market that, that have these very, very thick edges. And while that's great, like I said, for splitting down wood... It's not really great for any of the other things that you may encounter. And the need to split wood um, varies with certain people in certain regions, but I live in a cold, wet northern climate, and I don't really find that much need. Um, you can always grab smaller sticks and different things and work your way around having to split a bunch of firewood. Um, and like I said, if you do, uh, make wedges, do those things. You should be doing that really anyways, in my opinion. But I could be wrong. But this knife will hold up. I mean, you, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're not going to be batoning six-inch, uh, you know, seasoned hickory with knots in it. Um, you could. You could do it. And you definitely could do it with, uh, with, with wedges. Very, very nice knife. Very nice knife. Great geometry. Great geometry on that knife. Um, Mora levels of shaving wood with these buck knives like this. They, they really plane wood well. I enjoy the hollow grind. I know a lot of people talk about that as being a fault as well for these buck knives. Um, they're, they're plenty, plenty durable. If the grind is the issue... From, you know, uh, breaking a knife to not breaking a knife, I think you got more issues than just the grind. But we'll leave it at that. So, um, like I said, a couple questions there. Were the older buck knives, um, uh, were they ground from thicker stock? And are there any uh, SOG replacement sheaths for the 2.0 Bowie and the um, Super Bowie? Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and take care.